In this next series of episodes, I'm going to show you how to set up and lay out a basic website with Bootstrap and Ruby on Rails. This series is going to assume that you already have Ruby on Rails installed on your computer and you know how to run a few basic commands. If you don't, feel free to go ahead and sign up for the TechMaker uh, members area and there's a free course on how to uh, get started with Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and web development in general. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new application and we do that by running rails new and the title of your application. I'm going to call this uh, basic website. This is going to run a lot of scripts for us and set up the entire application. Once that finishes running, you're going to change the directory down into the directory that you just created by running that command. So in my case, it's basic website, and you can type ls to see all of the files and directories that are inside. Now what we want to do is open this directory up inside of a text editor so that we can uh, start adding to it uh, and writing some new code. Okay, so in here, once you get into the folder where your uh, application lives, um, we need to do a few things. The first thing that I want to do is actually get Bootstrap set up. To do that, you need to go into your gem file, and we're going to add a gem called Bootstrap SAS. Save this file, uh, come back to your terminal or command prompt, whatever you're using, uh, and run bundle install. You can find out more about this gem by coming to github.com slash twbs slash bootstrap sass and this tells you everything that you need to know to get uh, bootstrap set up and I see here that they have also added this so I'm going to go ahead and add this to my gem file and run bundle again. Okay, if we go back over here to the website it will tell us what we need to do to get Bootstrap going. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is import the Bootstrap styles in app slash assets slash style seats uh, slash application dot css dot scss. So here we're going to run into an issue because our style sheet is dot css without the scss. So we just need to rename this file and I'm gonna delete everything in here because I don't use that. Um, then the second thing is just copy these two lines and paste them in and save it. Um, additionally, we need to uh, make sure that we have this inside of our application.js file. So I'm gonna copy this in here in application.js and right under uh, the bottom of turbolinks I'm gonna go ahead and put bootstrap sprockets okay so once we do that we should be good to go now that we have bootstrap installed I'm gonna set up the structure for our basic pages and to do that I'm just gonna create a controller with some actions and that's gonna automatically create some uh, views for us so to do that we just run Rails G controller. I'm going to call it the pages controller. And I'm going to say we want a home action, an about action, a contact action, and that's good enough for now. Now, if we start the server by just running Rails S and we go back over to the browser and we go to localhost 3000. First of all, this at the root path uh, just tells us we have everything set up okay. Um, now if we want to see our pages, we can go to pages slash home and we should see it, yes. And I can tell that I have Bootstrap installed because it's using the default Bootstrap font right now. Now it's time for the fun part. So the first thing that I want to do is create one of those nav bars that you see at the top of a lot of websites. Um, and to do that, let's go back over to the code. And we can close all of this stuff. 
And the first thing that you want to open up is in the Views folder in the Layouts. At this point, you should have two folders, Layouts and Pages. Now, basically the way this works is a layout file. And if you're familiar with HTML, you should recognize this for the most part. A layout file is sort of a wrapper that goes around uh, your actual page. So here we're putting the title. We have some a little bit of header stuff. And then this yield tag actually takes whatever is in, like, if I'm on the home page, or let me say that a different way, if I'm at pages slash home, based on the way we have it set up right now, it's going to look and it's going to find this home file inside the pages folder, and it's going to put it where this yield is. So anything that I want to show up on every single page, I can put inside of my layout file. And we're going to put the nav bar here because obviously we want the nav bar to show up everywhere. And I'm going to do that by creating what's known as a partial. Now, basically what this is doing is it says, go look inside this uh, nav bar file and put whatever is in there right here. And we obviously haven't created a nav bar file yet. So if I refresh the page, it's going to tell me that I have a missing partial you know, pages slash navbar, application slash navbar, etc. Okay, so I actually see one thing that I want to go ahead and fix. I want to put this in a shared folder. And I'm going to create a new folder inside of my views, and I'm just going to call it shared. Now if I save everything and I refresh this, I should get a different error message. Yeah, missing partial shared slash navbar. So now what I want to do is actually inside my shared folder that I just created, which is inside this views folder, uh, I'm going to save this and it's going to be called underscore navbar.html.erb. Anytime you create a partial, it starts with an underscore. Now let's test this out and I'm just going to write test and then we're going to save it and I'm going to refresh the page and I should have test and then pages home. Now if I go to like pages slash about, you'll see that now I'm on the about page, but the test is still here because it's being rendered from the layout file, which will show up on every page which is using that layout file. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our nav bar in. We're gonna head over to the Bootstrap website where the documentation is. It's getbootstrap.com. Then you can click on components, and over here on the right, you'll see nav bar. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually just copy all of this right here and I'm gonna paste it in my shared folder so this is uh, just the example navbar they have I'm gonna copy this and then we're gonna modify it a little bit so I'm gonna replace test I'm just gonna save it and let's see what this gives us okay so here we have a navbar uh, it's got a lot of stuff but it doesn't actually do anything right now um, and we're about to change that Okay, so I have eliminated a lot of the code from this and simplified this a lot so that we just have our basic navbar. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video and just copy this down. Once you get this copied down, we need to make one more change. First, I'm going to show you the error uh, that's going to happen if we try to run this as is. If we refresh, we're going to get a undefined local variable or method root path. We're also going to have undefined about path and contact path. So we need to define these. To do that, we need to jump back to our code and look in the config file and the routes. And you'll see that we have, uh, these were defined when we, when we created the controller. So if you don't know what we're doing here, don't worry too much. There's a lot of good examples here and there's some good documentation online. Also, again, you can sign up uh, for the website for the members area, and there is a boot camp on uh, Rails that you can go through, and you'll go over some of this. So the first thing that I want to do is create a root path like we have here. I'm actually going to copy this and just paste it, and we'll change it. So ours is pages home. Now, if we go back here, uh, well, we'll still have an error. Um, but it'll be a different. So we can actually go to localhost 3000 now, and it's no longer telling us we don't have a defined root path. Uh, setting up that root gives us a root path, which is just the basically the home. Um, 
Now we need to define about path and contact path. And I don't want these to go to pages slash. I don't, first of all, I don't need this anymore. Um, so let's also get rid of this pages slash and this pages slash. And we're going to point these to the controller and the action. So we need to go to pages and then pound sign uh, and then about. And then to give it that about path uh, variable that we're looking at, it's actually a method, we're going to say as about like that. Now I'm going to just copy this and replace this get contact and then here here and here change this to contact okay so let's refresh and see what we've got so now if I click on about I have about if I click on contact to go to the right pages awesome next I'd like to show you a cool page inside the bootstrap site if you go to getting started and you scroll down here to uh, the examples there's some really cool stuff they have Next part of this series, I'm going to get into customizing the CSS so that you can build more unique websites. But here, I'm just going to show you how to uh, implement some of the basics and kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on. So let's check out this uh, Jumbotron example. This is one of the classic bootstrap examples. You can find a lot of websites that use this. Um, to get the HTML that we want, go to uh, View Page Source. Now, all of this stuff up here, the nav bar, this header content, we already have inside of our layout file. What we actually want is just this section here. So copy this, and then go back to the code. Um, we can close the routes. We don't need that anymore. We don't need the nav bar open. Let's go into home, and let's just paste this into home. And save this file, and then let's refresh our home page. And uh, let me fix one thing. I think they're using a, uh, well, let me open the nav bar back up. I think they're using nav bar fixed or fixed top, maybe. Let's refresh this. Yeah, something like that. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. Now we have a pretty decent layout. Um, uh, if we resize this, you'll see that it kind of does responsive actually does it pretty well. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about this. If you go back to the Bootstrap site and you look at uh, look at the components page, or the CSS actually, and if we go to um, the grid system, wherever that is, yeah, here we go. This explains a lot, and you should definitely read through this. Um, and it will explain the column structure. Basically, Bootstrap has a 12 column grid structure. And you can see here basically what this does. Um, the MD, the, the you'll sometimes you'll see MD, you'll see XS, SM, LG. That refers to different screen sizes. So if we look back at our example, when we drag this in right now, I'm at a full width and this is the large screen size. You'll see it pop in for MD. And what happens is, is like when you set .col-md-4 or whatever number, it applies, like in our case, 4 is a third of 12. So each one of these takes up one third of the space for everything above MD. And once you get below MD, so the next level is SM, it's going to break away from that and it's going to take up the full width. And that's really nice. Um, we could set specific styles, which we'll do in uh, one of the next videos on how to do like specific layouts for every screen size so that you have you can really control what it looks like on every device. That's all the time that I've got to do this video. Um, as an exercise, jump over to the about page and the contact page and try adding your own uh, page content. I'm going to do the same thing, and in the next video I will show you those, and I will also show you how to start customizing the styles, adding some images and extra content to make this a lot more custom. Uh, in the meantime, be well, and uh, hope you enjoyed this.